Amen. 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 Uh, we give glory to God this afternoon. Amen. 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 school. Amen, youth. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Um, just want to thank God for that. Where are the boys going to? Um, can I put a sign up for this? Oh, and we didn't say. Can can you can you sign up for this? <laughs> Sorry, uh, but I just need them to find them. You know, these are our children. We need to know where they're going, isn't it? Otherwise, we like, can be ignorant. Amen. We can go this afternoon. In anyway, to we find out where they're going, and uh, hopefully they will come back. I um, just want to. Uh, I want to thank God this afternoon. I want to thank God this afternoon. Before we go get into the word. I just want us to take some time to pray. Amen. We just want to pray according to the word of God. Timothy says, Timothy, amen. All of us know what that scripture says, isn't it? We should know by now. Amen. First Timothy. Is it first Timothy or second Timothy? <laughs> yes, Mama, that one. Okay. First Timothy chapter two. Can I have us on the girl, please? First Timothy chapter two. Right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Munjoma, this afternoon for introducing the word, the importance of the word of God. Amen. Now, in Timothy, you will find First Timothy chapter two, reading from verse one. You find in the word of God, I think it's First Timothy chapter three, verse. Um, Just stay with me. One of the scriptures where it says, All scripture is in my uh, is God breath. Amen. But anyway, we want to go to First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 1, Tasha, verse 1 and 2. The word of God says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Amen. Ask God to help them. Amen. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Amen. That's what we want to do this afternoon. We want to pray for all people. Amen. The word of God says, Ask God to help them. Now, I like the New Living Translation because it breaks it down what we are actually supposed to do. So, if we take, pay attention this afternoon, please, and it says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, regardless who they are, color, creed, race, it doesn't matter. All people, we're going to pray for them this afternoon. When we have prayed for all people, the next it says, ask God to help them. No matter what it is, we are asking God to help them. Amen. We are then going to intercede on their behalf. There are some that are struggling, they are suffering. We are interceding on their behalf. There are some that are not well. We want to pray that God, you may you heal them. So we are interceding on their behalf. And on to others, God goes on to say, and give thanks for them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some who have had children, some who have had good news. We want to thank God for their lives. Amen. So this afternoon, we want to pray. Hallelujah. As a church, we want to, since I was talking to somebody, I said, we don't sometimes realize the importance of this prayer, praying for all people. It is our mandate as a church, first of all, supplication and prayers be made for all people. And it is the church, it is the duty of the church to pray for all people. We also pray for salvation of lost souls, amen. May God give us a heart for lost souls, amen. When, when we see people that do not know God, may our heart beat, amen, a different kind of heart beat, amen, hallelujah. So if we can stand up to our feet this afternoon, and we want to pray for all people according to the word of God, amen. Whoever you think, UK, might be our neighbors, amen. Some of our neighbors, we think very dear of them. We want to pray for them. We want to ask God to help them. They might be our teachers that are not even nice to us. We want to pray. 
pray for them. They're going to be our coaches. Now, sometimes coach, you always ask me to pray. We want to pray for them. Amen. We want to pray for our managers, for those clients we look after, all people, the word of God says. Amen. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your throne this afternoon. We come unto you, O oh God, with the mandate, with the, with the command you have given us, O oh God, to pray for all people. Your word says, first of all, supplication and prayers be made for all men. Father, we are praying for our neighbors, 40, 45, 47, and 43, and all those on special Lord, we bring them before your throne. Those that play with Nathaniel, oh God, we bring them before your throne. Nasha Daniel of Ashton and his friends. I pray for your grace upon his life. I pray for even as they are playing, oh God, Gama put his children. Never see what the man of whatever they keep a lot of now. Gama Chinget, whenever you are in a book, his children, but we will never marry one must be ours. We pray this afternoon unto you who is able. We call unto you, Jehovah God. Who says, call, pray for all people and they ask God to help them. To the Mokumira Marcus, who are Marcia, who is the Marcia Marimoga, and Maria, and the Mokumira Pamela, who must in all Maria ask you to help them, oh God, in their life, oh God. In the life of God, I pray this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Namata Pomorimua, Romans, Timbos, and Marimuni, well, pray. This afternoon, oh God, I call unto you, Father. I call unto you, Almighty oh Father. Today, we start to see a free talk. We start to see a man. 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 We start to see a man.
Hallelujah. He's ever wonderful God. Please take your seats this afternoon. Amen. Moria Kashi Nariyamchum. Can somebody help us? If I show you, can you want to log on to Facebook for recording? Did I wait there long? Oh, okay. Can somebody help? Mrs. Kumbo, Mrs. Kumbo. Amen. Hallelujah. I just, I just want to. I just want to share a word this afternoon. Uh, but before I do so, I just want to, hello, Mrs. Ali. <laughs> it's good to have you in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Amen. Uh, on, I want to share a testimony before I, 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 I preach. Amen. Hi, guys. Good to have you back in the house. Sorry, it's me who calls all that, that, uh, that uh, whatever you want to call it. Thank you for coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Benzo and Kelvin. It's wonderful to have you back. Okay. I'm not sure what had happened there, but I caused that. So if you got anyone to blame, blame me. All right. We can talk after church. Yeah. Good. Uh, I just want to thank God this afternoon. I just want to thank God. I want to give a testimony. Of what God, what God is able to do. On Friday, I was at work. I was on a long day at work, and many of you might know I look after a lady who had an accident, so she's uh, tetraplegic, and uh, she, yeah, she's tetraplegic. So she stays in a wheelchair. She breathes, but she has a support of um, a ventilator when she's breathing. Um, so. We're taking a back to bed. It was around five. And normally at that time there's a, a, a on a Friday, there's a prayer group that happens between five and five thirty. And so I had my earphones on and I was like, oh, I just want to join in prayer. It was muted, but I was just, you know. So my mind was not even where Marin was. You know, I was there, but I was not there. And I was praying. And the 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 the, the, the message that somebody shared was on the, I think it was on the video of the Holy Spirit. If I'm correct, but you know what I want to share is that whilst the prayer was happening, um, so I went with another girl and then with Mary Logan. So it was the three of us. We were just uh, they were talking. I don't know what they were talking about because I wasn't concentrating. But it ended up um, they started asking me about oh Margaret. I don't know how I don't to this day I don't know how the conversation started. But I started talking about Jesus. You know what? I, 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 this God we serve is wonderful. He's powerful. It's difficult to tell people or to preach to people about Jesus Christ. But, but especially even in their own homes, you know. But God has availed an opportunity. And our testimonies are our true uh, 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 preaching to people. It's, uh, and our testimonies, our our lives, and you can share what. And I, I just want to say what because one of the girls said, Oh, I don't even know. I don't even like going to church. The only thing I go to church up for is 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 is, 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 is for weddings and for funerals and for christening. I don't even know what christening is about. That was the conversation. And then uh, you know it don't on me. There's a book in it, there's a preaching. We, we, we're going to read it. I think it's Ephesians chapter three, verse ten. God says He wants to use the church to demonstrate Himself. He wants to use the church. And here the world is saying we only go to church for funerals and for weddings. And, and I'm thinking to myself. And then and then uh, I don't know how the conversation went, but at the end, what I said was, it's important for us to know God. And I gave a testimony of when my parents passed away. I said to them, you know, when my parents passed, there are many things that you can think of, but I thank God that the one thing, the important thing I thought of was to, to go and pray for my parents. That was the one thing that I thought the Tuesday afternoon, when I went to visit them, I looked at them and I thought, my nest being moved in, and I thought, my patient is passing away. And, and then Maggie stepped in and I thought, I've got to pray for them. I can't leave them without being. That was the, I didn't even want to ask, oh, what, what? That was the important thing to pray for them at that point. I made, I said, Mom, you need to repeat this prayer for me. I made Mom repeat a sinner's prayer. I went and I prayed for 
Then I made dead in Peter. And I said, I was saying to Maria, that is important. That receiving Jesus, that is important. Okay. We might go to church for many reasons, but there is one thing that is important that even on the deathbed, there are many people who are looking for it. Amen. Amen. So we can go to church and we can say, oh, I want to go and see my person. I want to go and see. But that one moment, that one moment is very important. So our relationship church with Jesus Christ is very important. No wonder I said, thank you, my own John, for the word. Because when you go to John, it says, in the beginning, children, listen to this. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> the word that you were reading. It was in the beginning. Can you put John 1, 1, John, John chapter 1? In the beginning was the word. <laughs> that word which you guys read, it was in the beginning. Yes? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Yeah? That's what it says. And the word was God himself. <laughs> he was in the beginning. Then it goes on to say, he became flesh. Rikashima. This word that you were reading, church, this word that you were reading, that word became flesh and it dwelt and walked amongst us. And we could not even recognize him. We could not even tell who he was. We could, and we could not see it was the God of the heavens. Amen. He said, and it became a flesh. This word. This word you were reading, guys. This word, healing, this word that you were reading became a flesh and it dwelt amongst the men. Amen. He was in the beginning. And who is this word? This word is Jesus Christ. Okay? Because he is the one way Colossians, he says, he is the image of the invisible God. Amen. When we see Jesus, we have seen the Father. That's what he says, isn't it? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So it is important to know this word. It's very important, this word. So when I go back to my testimony, I just, and then it was in that moment, in that moment, that God just took over. And I thanked God, though we ended up in tears and all that, but I thanked God, because then Marian said, yes, Marcus, I remember. I remember because the one time she went to an operation, I went with her to Sheffield, and she was going for an operation. I just started working with her, and I said, Marian, can I pray for you? And she reminded me on Friday, said, Marcus, just remember, you prayed for me. And that was good. It made me feel like it's all, all is going to be well. So you know what? My prayer, my prayer church, let that be our prayer. You know, Jesus said in one occasion, he says, the harvest is plentiful out there. There are many people who do not know God out there. Right? And he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out laborers. Amen. <laughs> so we must pray to the Lord of the harvest that even I may be a leper. Amen. <laughs> that you may be a leper as well. Amen. That we may be a leper in the house of God. That you may be a leper as well. We are praying to the Lord of the harvest that, oh God, send out your laborers. But I also, you need to answer that, but I also, oh God, Wants to be one of them that you are sending out. Nobody is teaching that. We're not going to do to me that I won't go that way. Amen. They want to achieve, 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 they want to we need to tell them about this word, this word which is Jesus Christ, amen. We need to tell them about this word, and this word is Jesus Christ, amen. It is important. See my word, the word that we have this afternoon. Father, we thank you this afternoon for the word, for the word of God. May you have your way in our lives. May you speak to us, oh Father, this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God this afternoon comes from the book of Ephesians. Amen. God help us. You know, when I was listening, I was reading and 
That's why I called you Benzel and Kelvin. When I was reading, I, I, I had the heart for the young people, for our children, for our children, amen. For our children, hallelujah. For our children, the young children, amen. Us as adults in here, we can say we have given our life to the Lord, haven't we? Amen. I would like to believe that. We have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ. We have given our lives to, to this word, amen. That was in the beginning, amen. And I thought, what about our children, oh God? What about our children? Have they surrendered their lives? <laughs> See, God chose David when he was young. Daniel was also a young guy, amen, and his friends, they were young guys. So there is no excuse whatsoever. Amen. Then we have no excuse whatsoever, Denzel, for you not to receive Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we a few months ago, Esther died. Right? She died. She was just, just before 30. Okay? So, so it's God. We, we pray for long life. We pray for long life. But in that long life, we must live in Jesus Christ. Amen. We must give our life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then be rooted in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This word is for us. Amen. This, we cannot take it out there without it in our hearts. First of all, we can't. We can't. Thank you, Jesus. Right, I've got, um, you know, when you read a different version and then it becomes very trendy, and then you pick up another one, and then, and then it happens like that. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. This is good news. I'm going to read from this one. I'd like Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to go through the whole chapter, girls. Media, girls. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 3. Sometimes we like, I like, I like to quote this because we, there's a big way it says we are, we are, we, 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 we have spiritual blessings in Christ. And so we are claiming those spiritual blessings, those spiritual blessings. It's good. We, we must claim that. I, but we do have them. But it, these things that we claim, these promises are very positional. Right? I'll reiterate I'll, I'll re that. These blessings, we can only get them when we are positioned. There is a certain position we have got to be in to be able to have them. Amen. So when we read, I'm going to read good news, but I don't think NLT will be okay. But to those who don't have Bibles, let's follow. Amen. Verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing. We have, we have been blessed. Let me read it again. Who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing? Now this one says in Christ Jesus. Amen. So these bless, spiritual blessings are there to us, but only if in Christ Jesus. Amen. So how I stand with Christ Jesus. How I am standing. Now Christ Jesus is not for the old people. Okay? Christ Jesus is for everyone. For all men. That young man, the Pastor was talking about, he was a young man, a young rich man. He was a young man. Amen. So this Christ Jesus, being in Christ Jesus. It's for all people. So we have the heavenly spiritual blessings, but only in Christ Jesus. What does this one say? Right. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. <laughs> in Christ. Hallelujah. That's four. So we, we, we are positioned, we must be positioned in Christ to get the heavenly spiritual blessing. Amen. We must be positioned in Christ Jesus. Verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. So see, see he chose us in him, in Christ. This is it. The him is Christ Jesus. So, verse 4, for he chose us in him 
before the creation of the world. Amen? In his love, verse 5, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. What does this one say? Verse 5 says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, I like this one because it says, In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. I think I remember in John, he said, there, there is no other, no way to the Father except through, through Jesus Christ. Amen. So it is only through Christ. It is how we are positioned and the way we walk into, amen, how, through what, which way. He is the only way to the Father. Amen. So only through Christ do we have that sonship. For me to call myself a child of God, amen. John chapter 1, if you go back to John chapter 1, it says, to them that received him, he gave them the power to become, that is where adoption comes in, to them that received Jesus Christ, to them that received this word, they were given the power to become the children, amen. Then the pastor used to always say, the power to become, we are becoming, amen. So only through Jesus Christ are we becoming the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Our adoption starts in and through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, what this, that was this five, right? <laughs> so it says, uh, predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure. You know when the Bible says it's pleasure, it, it, what do you think? This is good. You know, when the word of God says in his pleasure, in his light, God, God found that this, this was good. That through his son, we might be sons and daughters of God. And this was pleasing to God. This God found pleasure in this. And this was his will. Amen. 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 That was the reason why the son came down from heaven to come down here. To so that through him, through him, we might have life. Through him, we might be adopted to sonship and to, to, to sonship, which is daughter or son either way. Amen. So it is through Christ Jesus. And this pleased God. Amen. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Amen. Now, mine, 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 mine goes here. Yes, the one he loves has got a capital letter one. Yeah? It, it, it does not have the same? Yes. So the, the one he, he loves. Remember, do you remember when, when um, was it John after the baptism? No, no, no. That was the transfiguration, wasn't it? This is my son, whom I love. Jesus, God says that, isn't it? To the three disciples. To the, to the three disciples, yes. God says, this is my son, whom I love. This one. And here God is saying, listen, 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 listen. To the, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us, he has given us grace. Somebody said to me, we, we know only that grace is unmerited favor, but grace is more than unmerited favor. Grace is everything that comes from God that we cannot get on our own. Amen. Amen. So, let me read it again. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us, it is the one he loves. Amen. Amen. If you just see, we are only on base, but Christ Jesus, this is all about Christ Jesus. This is all about the Son of God, the one that he loves, this one. So, there is no Christianity without Jesus Christ. There is no gathering here without Jesus Christ. Amen. We cannot say we pray to God without having received Jesus Christ. Because it is in Christ, it is through Christ, it is in the one he loves that we are able to go before the Father. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I'm reminded of Exodus when the children of Israel were coming.
coming out of Egypt. And God says, only when I see the blood will I pass by. Only when I see the blood on the doorpost and this blood resembles the cross. Amen. And this cross resembles Jesus Christ. Amen. So without the cross, without Christ, there is no life actually. Actually, there is no life. Right. So I want to ask a question. How many of us in here, and I'm asking to anyone who can hear my voice to the oldest in this room, how many of us here have received Jesus Christ into their life? Okay, you can keep that answer to yourself for now, for now. Right, we'll carry on. Verse 7, in him, now, again I'll say to you, when the Bible here in Ephesians, when it speaks of in him, He's referring to, to Christ. Okay? Okay, church? No, we, we, are, we are just going through the Bible. There's, there's nothing else. We can respond to each other. We can talk to each other. Okay? Right. So when it's saying to him, it's talking about him, Jesus Christ. Right? So let's go. Verse 7. Natasha. Verse 7. Tana. It is him. We have redemption. Right. Redemption. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are redeemed. We have our redemption. <laughs> we have been plugged out. We have been removed. <laughs> we have been placed at another level. We are redeemed in Christ Jesus. We are redeemed in Him. We are redeemed. So I can say He is my redemption. He is my redeemer. <laughs> he is my redemption. He is my redeemer. Hallelujah. Now when we say that, I will ask, is he really your redeemer? <laughs> is he really your redeemer, church? Is he really your redeemer? Hallelujah. He is our redemption. The word of God says. All right, verse 7. In him, this is Jesus Christ. We have redemption through his blood on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is freely sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. The word of God says it. he did not consider being God as something to hold on to, but he gave everything us, else everything up for the sake of the cross. Now it was for our redemption. Amen. Now when we think of the cross, sometimes we do not realize how painful it was. Amen. At one point when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, when he was just thinking of it, he was overwhelmed and he says, I am stricken with grief. Just thinking about the cross. Just thinking about the cross to redeem us. He felt overwhelmed. He was stricken with grief. Amen. For us to call him our redemption. For us to call him. For, for me to say, my redeemer, he had to go on the cross. Amen. His blood was shed for us. The word of God says, for all have sinned. We have all sinned. You see us here, young children. We are all sinners from the youngest to the oldest. We are all sinners. Amen. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God for Jesus Christ, who is our redemption. Amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ, the word which was in the beginning. Amen. That became flesh and walked on this earth and then went to the cross. He is our redemption. We thank God for that redemption. Amen. For us to be called sons and daughters, to have an adoption, to have blessings in the heavenly places. It is through his work on the cross. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. In him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins, yes, right, right, right. In accordance with the riches of God's grace, amen. His abundant grace, amen. That he, the word of God says, I love it. Yeah, that he loves it. <laughs> when the word of God says love it, it's like who can it was so who pi wapu who rasiri wabuzi eisho. She told I as you want, amen. According to your needs. He lavished it on us, amen. He lavished his grace on us. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, this is where I like it. 
in translation, when it goes from verse 7 to verse 8, it says, He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. Listen, verse 8, He says, He has showered His kindness on us. Amen. He has loved His kindness. We are not short of kindness. As the Bible says, He has loved us with His grace and mercy. As the says, with His love. We are not short of love. Amen. We have it in abundance. That the spirit is, we have them in abundance because he has lavished his mercy on us. The word of God is in the Ecclesiastes. Which one? It says, his mercy is new every morning. <laughs> We've got lavished with the mercy. Hallelujah. And they are new every morning. Amen. <laughs> this mercy of God. We are not in short supply of it. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> this is where we say, Glory to Jesus. Yes. This is where we go, Yes, yes, yes. This Jesus lavished us. He did not hold back. No wonder why. No wonder why. No wonder why God said he was exalted. God gave him the name that is above every other name. Amen. I'm giving him the name above every other name. Take the cover away from me. But the words of God, let it be your will. Your will. Amen. So he has lavished his mercy on us. We are not in short supply. When we sin, not that we go out, but not that we go out sinning deliberately, but his messages are new every day. Every morning we say, God, this morning I thank you. I thank you, Father. Yesterday I sinned, but today I thank you for your message. I started a new page, a new slate. Thank you for today, oh God. Thank you for your message, which are new every morning, which are new today. And we start <laughs> as if we've never sinned, as if we never lived yesterday. Amen. So we thank God for his, this mercy of his amen. Verse 8. And he showered, he has showered his kindness on us along with his wisdom. And I understand, you know. He 
has lacked it. Remember when we started, I said, these promises, we can only get them when we are positional. We have got to be in a certain position to get them. Amen. So we cannot claim wisdom and mercy and, and understanding when we are outside his remit. Amen. We cannot help them. They are not ours. It's right of us. These blessings are still those to those that love him, that follow him. Amen. These blessings alongside mercy, alongside wisdom, alongside understanding is there for the taking that you've got to be positional. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to be positional, Tasha. You can't have wisdom when you're outside of Christ. You've got to be in Christ. You've got to find it through Christ. You've got to be in the one he loves for you to be able to get wisdom, for you to have mercy, for you to have understanding. It is there for the taking, but only when we are positioned right in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, this is the day and the time when it is it's, it's, it's a bit too late. It's, it's a bit out of fashion to just do church. Right? I think so. I think so. Don't you agree? It's a, this, is, this is not the time nor age where we should do church only. Where you're like, you're like, ah, just gonna go. No, 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 Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hey, hey. There is nothing that 
that is right now. If you are, if you think you are and you don't have strength, you are not. Amen. If you are there, son and daughter, if you are there without Christ and you think you are there, you are not. Amen. We need Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. And no one else in history can do. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. We can start talking everything else, but once we have connected this positioning bit, we've got, we can talk about the blessings. We can talk about the wisdom. It is there. That's how it's about. It's there for the taking. It's there. Love is there for us. But we've got to come back to this positioning. We've got to give ourselves to Jesus Christ. Let him be the Lord and the Savior of our lives. Amen. Let him take over him. Him, we go mad and crazy about him. We talk about, and that is it. Because 
It's not it. It's not it. He's more than that. Amen. Tasha, it's more than that. He is not just a word that is the Rema word, the written word. He is more than that. He is all powerful. Amen. This Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that, let, let us just pray. Father, I pray that our children may know you. I pray that you may open their eyes, reveal to them that they may know you, oh Father, that our children may know you, even us as we are here, that we may have a renewed understanding, a renewed longing for you. You said, blessed are they that they hunger and thirst. Give us a heart that hungers for you, oh God, this afternoon in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we go to, um, right. So this is where we then speak to uh, New Living Translation. Verse 9. It says, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. <laughs> it's why pleasure Christ. It's Christ. He is it's the pleasure of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Right. There is a verse in the Bible that says, uh, or oh, is it a song? Correct me. Uh, where it says, Every, we, we, can, we, we choose to, to bow now, or even if we don't want to bow now, we will still bow. Wow. At, yeah. at whatever point, we are going to bow. Yeah. So the choice is either we bow now, yeah. willingly, or we are going to bow. Yeah. Right. Right. Did we get it? Yeah. Here, the word is saying everything, everything in heaven and on earth will be under the authority of Christ Jesus. <laughs> so we choose. We can choose now to allow him to be the king and lord and when do we die? Because those that have died, not knowing Christ, he is going to have authority over them. And he's going to choose what he will do. He is going to have authority. So, why men say, I choose now, once I can still think, right? I choose now to have him be the Lord and the master of my life. To have, other, in other words, when we say Lord and master of my life, I am saying for him to have authority over my life. What is it? Let's repeat it. Let's repeat it. If why find a school, you this word, right? God forbid, right? I'm not saying this is going to happen, but God forbid one of you is taken from us at a young age. This word that you are hearing this afternoon, this word that my mind is preaching, that that my machine is preaching, this word is going to be waiting for you. Right? So I'm sorry to say you've got no excuse. I'm sorry, that, that's been pressed on my heart. The young people must know, in this day and age, yes, are, are we going to have believers? Yes, our children are going to believe, and they're going to be the preachers and pastors and evangelists of their time. Amen. They are going to, and we are going to make sure it happens. Oh, God help our children. We are going to pray and cry and make sure it happens. But we remember, church, the enemy is there. He is seeking the word of God. Says. He is seeking what he can eat and much and much and much and much and throw out and spit out. Amen. He is looking for that. And I, I, we are not going to allow it. Not on our watch. Yeah. Not on our watch. Not on our watch, Father. We are not going to let it happen. God help us. Our children are God's children. Our children are going to be the servants of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will live to see them preach Jesus Christ. <laughs> the children that are now, yes, please, I may have my parents stop me preaching Jesus Christ. And I want to see my children do the same. Who know for what I said, yes. Who you call it all to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Because he is the center. Listen, the word of God says it. When time and the fullness of time, the things that are living and the things that are dead, all authority is going to be under Christ Jesus. The best thing we can do is to look for him now and find him and seek him. And the word of God says, diligently seek him. Amen. And the young man, Denzel, there is no excuse. There's a young man, Kelvin, there is no excuse. We look for Jesus Christ to solve it. We seek for Jesus Christ. We seek 
sick for Jesus Christ and we find him and we worship him in Jesus Christ mighty name. Hallelujah. All the children, all the children, princess, we pray to God that we stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus in this day and age. We stand for Jesus, girls and boys. We stand for Jesus, church. We stand for Jesus. We must be an example. If we are where we are and we are pleasing God, we must be an example to our children. Hallelujah. They must see that this Christ is real. They must see that. My children say, you know, you know, that I forgot to tell you. On Friday when I was talking to Marilyn, I realized I was preaching more. And I said, oh my goodness, this is when my kids say, mom, you're in preaching more now. My kids always say that. And, but I thought of it in a quick note. Thank you, Jesus. Because I, I saw the opportunity and, you know, make the most of it. And, but our children should see that. Our children should see that. Ah, when it comes to the things of Jesus, this mom of ours goes mad. Oh, let me go mad and be truthful, guys. Let me go mad and mean it from the bottom of my heart. Amen. So that they learn and they know. And they will follow my God for being what they are in They should know that ah, our mother. I'm going to preach like my mother did. I'm going to sing like my mother did. I'm going to serve like my mother did. We are going to be examples to our children. This Jesus should mean something to us. This Jesus should mean more than just coming to church. Should mean just dressing up. I have to take off. I think I wore three, four dresses before I wore this one. It should mean more than that. It should mean more than that. It should mean more than dressing up and coming to church. This Jesus should be she should be the center of what I do. Amen. Should be everything about me. Everything in all your ways acknowledge him. In all your ways acknowledge Jesus. In all your ways acknowledge Jesus. He's not a respecter of age, Bobo. He's not a respecter of age. At whatever age, as long as you give me. I'm reminded of Samuel. He started Sammy from a young age. His mom used to take a, a, a comment every year. He saw a, a bigger comment. He grew up in the church. Not just coming to church and, and playing on the phone. He wasn't, there were no phones there, but suppose he was. You know, he wasn't playing on the phone and scrolling and, and oh, this is TikTok. No, he wasn't doing that. He was serving the Lord in the house. And then so that, playing the drums like you guys are being, reading the word of God. Amen. That is serving the Lord. Amen. So, in all our ways, let us acknowledge this Jesus. He is the center of everything. We'll read again verse 9 before I finish. God has revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ. A plan to fulfill his good, his own good pleasure. God's good own pleasure. Amen. I'm reminded that that's what says. We are created for God's pleasure. Amen. For his pleasure we are created. Let's tell And this is the plan. At the right time, amen, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ Jesus. Everything in heaven and on earth. Amen. amen. He will bring everything under the authority of Christ Jesus. And like I said, it is wise for us this afternoon to those who have not uh, given their lives to the Lord. It is wise that we do so. Amen. To those who have not given their lives to you this afternoon, and I'm directing this more to our Sunday school. I'm directing this more to our youth. Those who have not given Jesus Christ. If you have given Jesus Christ, or oh, you want to rededicate your life, look at me, guys. Look at me. Don't look down. Look at me. I'm talking to you. Those who have not received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, those who want to rededicate their life this afternoon, right now, that's what we want to do. Amen. Because we have just seen it's the big deal. Amen. Without Christ, there is nothing. Only in Christ can all things be hold themselves. Amen. Without Christ, nothing can be hold itself. Amen. Amen. So we want to rededicate our lives to Jesus Christ. Those who want to rededicate their lives. Those who want to surrender their lives to Jesus for the first time. We are going to do it this afternoon. And we want to do it. Because let the Lord come with me. And I'm left behind. Amen. Because he said to Nicodemus, unless the man is born again, 
He cannot see the kingdom of God. Yeah. Right? Pastor, you come back here. Yeah? You don't wait until you come back. He says, unless the man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We all want to go to heaven, right? We might think that it's just a story, that's just a, 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 a lullaby that is told by. It's not. This is business. This is, this is business that is best, this one. Okay? So it is, it is not stories. It's, not, it's, it's a real deal. So we want to give ourselves to Jesus. We want to surrender our life to Christ Jesus this afternoon in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I'll leave this time to Pastor who will take us through that. Amen. We surrender our life. Those who want to surrender their life, keep right. This is serious. Right? This is important. You might never have, never again have this opportunity. So make be wise and have this opportunity. You might think I'm scaring you, but this is real. This is as real as it gets. Okay? We want to stand on our feet. We want to surrender our life to the Lord and Pastor Borigena will lead us this afternoon in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. Amen.